It is Monday, August 21st, 2023. This is another edition of Baseball Today. That is my man, Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose, producer Rob, along for the ride as well. Robbie Scirocco, welcome back. And I guess welcome back to me. Uh, tip of the cap to Jolly Olive for filling in last Wednesday through Friday. Did a bang-up job as always. But it's good to see your smiling face. I missed you. We missed you. It's You know, it's not easy to host this show. Like you're, You do such oh, a good job at it. You make it seem easy, but it's not, Chris. No, Shout out Alden. Uh, did a lot of the questions. Oh, our yeah, our intern Alden Stone, who returned to Butler University. He's yeah. back for his sophomore year. We're gonna miss him. He did a great job with all the baby ball player stuff, and just he's a great intern. He's got a very, very bright future in this business. Uh, let's start with a real tip of the cap to the future Hall of Famer Miguel Cabrera. As he's heading through every stadium for the last time, he's being showered with gifts, and he played his final game in Cleveland where he's played as much as any place on the road. They gave him an awesome guitar, um, you know, Miguel Cabrera, insignia, and picture, and the whole bit. And what does he do when Jose Ramirez hands him the guitar? He does a little shadow boxing. I mean, the dude is just hilarious. I'm sorry. That was pretty good, and and Jose Ramirez wants no part of it. He wants that whole thing to end, which is awesome on his you know, aside because he like knocked Tim Anderson down to the ground. He should be gloating about it, but he's not. It's not who right. he is. I thought it was funny. The whole like gift thing, Chris, is so strange to me. Like I'm happy people are like paying homage to one of the greats. I, I, it's not that I don't like the gifts. We've seen it done a lot now. Uh, Mariana Rivera was like one of the first people I, I saw have it done. And then it was Jeter Chipper. and Chipper. And I don't It's it's nice, but some of these gifts are ridiculous. The twins gave him a fishing pole. Do you think Miguel Cabrera, like, what's he going to do with that fishing pole? I don't know. I mean, he does live part of the year in Miami, doesn't he? So plenty of good places to fish. I just don't think he's going to be using that fishing pole. And that guitar right there, I don't think he's going to be using that guitar. Either. That might be going into storage. All right. Uh, busy weekend. A lot of stuff to get to. Apologize if maybe your team didn't make the cut of our five questions because there was so much stuff to cover. But I want to start with this. I know you talked about the Mariners late last week, but I think we have to get back on that train because they've now won six in a row. They sweep the world champs down in Houston. They're now just three back of Texas in the American League West. So what was the biggest story to come out of that series? Was it that J-Rod got like a million hits? Was it that Jose Altuve picked up career hit number 2,000? Or was it that Fromber got lit up and then had the little dust up afterward? Or was it something else? It's probably the Julios, uh, you know, getting hot. Not the Julios, tr- probably Julio getting hot. Uh, the Julio. Uh, 17 hits in four games. Um, just really can't be stopped right now. He did make a little change in his stance, widen the base a little bit. See Rosie, head doesn't move as much, seeing the ball better now, barreling every dang pitch he sees up. So I think that was the biggest reason. And we always talked about that with the Mariners. They've, they were always middling around, and it was because Julio wasn't going offensively like he can. I mean, he's they rely on his bat uh, to do what he's been doing. Maybe not to this extent, um, but he's carried that team, and and they're the they're they're running now because of it. I mean, a lot of things definitely happened in that series. Shout out to Jose for the two thousand hits. That's incredible. It's so many freaking hits, guys. Um, uh, the starting pitching of the Mariners was incredible. That's been another reason why they've been good. But I guess to answer your question, I think it's it's got to be Julio. Like Framber, yeah, he hasn't been great since the no-hitter, but uh, those things happen. I don't think that the dust-up was silly, to be honest with you. Um, mm. I think that... Mm, I want to stop you there. thought that was intentional. Yeah, but this is this is now like a repeated pattern for a very good pitcher. Gets taken deep doesn't pitch as well as he wants all of a sudden he loses his control like it's I don't know man I think that there's something going on with him and I don't quite know what it is in fact if you look at his stats the second half of the year yes he had the no hitter against Cleveland but it has not been good okay seven starts since the break we got the no hitter let's put that off to the side he's given up six earned runs three times in those seven five earned runs one time four earned run once, and three earned runs once. This team is not going to be able to successfully defend its title if this guy does not get his shit straight. And I think that part of it is we we know that he goes and sees a sports psychologist, which I applaud him. I'm shocked that 100% of athletes don't go do that. 
And he's talked about how that really helps him control himself, get him in the right frame of mind. I don't know if he needs to double his sessions or something, but he is not the same dude. He's not. I still don't think that was an intentional hit by pitch, but. But could you understand why some people do think it? Because it wasn't sure, it, it, it has the first happened. time. It, yeah, it has happened a couple of different times. I, I get that. Maybe before it was. I mean, that just didn't seem like one to me, but I could be wrong about that. I still don't think it's the most important part of that series. I think it's still Julio doing what he's doing. Mm-hmm. So okay. I don't even know if you answered the question, your own question. What what was well, the most important part? I do think it was Fromber. Um, I mean, the Julio okay. stuff's amazing because if a record stood since 1925 and it gets broken, when we're talking about freaking 98 years, that's awesome. So the dude is great. And you made all the all the valid points. But I would just say that I think it I think the Astros community is a little bit, I'm not gonna say panicked. Worried is less than panicked, right? Yeah. Okay, good. That's where I think that's where they are because Hunter Brown has been doo-doo. Christian Javier has not been great. Okay, Verlander's been good. They just got her Keedy back. I think that they're sitting there going, man, it's going to take a lot for us just to get into the playoffs. And then once we get into the playoffs, I don't know if we have a a run in us. We'll see. Yeah, I'm looking at his I'm looking at his stats since June and it's four, five, seven ERA. Yeah, not pretty. Not pretty. That's includes a no hitter in there, too. So not pretty. All right. One of the crazier things of the year happened in the Mets Cardinals series. You had the cards top prospect and Mason Wynn got his first big league knock really cool beat out an infield hit Alonzo stretched for it Mets didn't get him in time everybody celebrates and then Alonzo fires the ball into the crowd about 20 rows up broadcasts are going nuts the Twitter verse is going insane Cardinals fans are like what the hell did you just do with that kid's first ball so everybody's in a tizzy until Pete's postgame press conference I know it sounds stupid, but it is just a, a, a bad brain fart. I know uh, throwing the ball in the stands that that robs that, that robs him of a kind of a, a really special moment. But I, I I feel really bad thinking back on on my first hit and um, and just getting the ball thrown back to the dugout. I, I feel I, I feel awful. I feel like a piece of crap. Okay, is this much to do about nothing, or is there something there? It's much to do about nothing. I mean, without the presser, then yeah, you could think something's up. He did like kind of give one of the ball waggles and people were like, oh, that was towards the Cardinals dugout. He knew what he was doing. He was just showing that there was dirt on the ball and he was going to toss it. That's the universal sign for this ball is bad. Uh, so I don't think it was really anything. And after the game, he bought him a bottle of tequila, sent him a signed bat, a nice ball of tequila, 1942. Mm-hmm. Way to go, Pete. Mm-hmm. Um had had some shots of that this weekend. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's I think it is much ado about nothing, you know. Shout out the guy for getting his first hit. He ended up getting the ball back. So it's not like uh it's gone missing forever. He didn't he didn't throw it into like the fire or something like that. He threw it into the crowd, the crowd gave it back, he gave his bat, gave the post game pressure, everything's fine. Right? That's hilarious. Throw it into the fire. Yeah, who uh, I forget who it was that threw a memento into the fountain in kansas city was that last year or two years ago there was something like that i there think was like i know a, you're talking about yeah it, there was a first home run hit and yeah, somebody came back yeah. on the field they tossed it back up here i think it was harrison bader that actually threw it into the fountain but i forget who hit it but yes that that sort of stuff happens it's interesting because i think it just goes to show you the point that fans are so much more in tune into the broad scope of baseball than you players are. And I think that you can help clarify this. Most players don't even know what fucking day it is. Like if you were to ask players, they go, is it Wednesday or is it Thursday? They just, they know they play baseball. They play baseball every day. They do not pay attention to what else happens in the sport outside of their clubhouse. They just don't. Most of them, not everybody, but you guys are such in your little world and you have to repeat the same thing. After. Do you think that Pete Alonso knew that Mason Wynn, that was his first hit? Of course he didn't. No. Of course he didn't. Now, we think of uh, Pete as this big, dumb, lovable ox. I think that's kind of what he is a little bit. <laughs> I was just saying, yeah, kind of. I don't think he's dumb. You know what I'm saying. 
Like, yeah. no, I don't think he's dumb, but you know what I'm saying, right? Like he's a big lovable ox is good. Lovable ox. I take back the dumb, but you know what I'm saying? Like he just kind of, yeah. you know, but 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 like that's what it feels a little bit like. And I think it's it's kind of endearing because I feel like I know Pete Alonzo. Yeah, I mean, as far as like knowing if a guy's had a hit or not, I mean, sometimes you can look up at the scoreboard and see a zero up there and know he's a rookie, so you 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 understand that. But for the for the most part, I mean, yeah, Pete didn't do anything wrong here, people. No. He tried to give a souvenir to the fans. He did he did kind of wing that thing. That wasn't like a toss in the stands. Like he he chucked that thing from fair territory. By the way, Pete, like I didn't know that he did that every time when the ball's out of play that he throw threw it in this. Please do it. Yeah. Like don't 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 be hesitant. And I take back that he was a dumb lovable ox. You you know what I'm please let's not uh let's not make that a bigger issue than it needs to be. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Jeez, oh man. Hey, um, I know a lot of people have gone back to school, but you're still trying to squeeze out that last bit of summer. You know, the weather, except out of here in Southern California, still very nice around the country. You might want to get around to golf in. You might want to go take a drive with that somebody special in your life. And, you know, you get back to the house and all of a sudden you look up at the clock and you're like, oh my God, it's 730. Now we have to start making dinner from scratch. Uh-uh. Nuh-uh. You're good. Thanks to our friends at Factors, which is America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. It can help you fuel up with fast and chef-repaired, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals and delivered straight to your door. As I mentioned, everybody is still busy. So with Factors, you skip the extra trip to the grocery store. You skip the chopping, the prepping, the cleanup as well, which is the part I love. And you still get the flavor and the nutritional quality that you need. This August, get Factor. Enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals. Enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered straight to your door, ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess, so tasty. And you round out your meal, replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 45-plus add-ons. That includes breakfast items like their delicious apple cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar egg bites, potato bacon and egg breakfast skillet. My God, my mouth is watering. I haven't eaten yet today, and boy, could I use one of these. It's that simple. When one of these boxes arrives at my door, Michelle and I look at each other. We're like, thank you, Lord. We are so happy. So head on over to factormeals.com slash today50. Use that code today50. You're going to get 50% off. That is the code today50, factor meals. That's meals with an S dot com slash today50 and get half off. Enjoy. Yankee fans are not going to enjoy this. They got their first eight game losing streak since 1995. They are now nine back in the AL wildcard chase. It's been a bad year for those uh, fans in the boogie down. But which fan base do you think is most disappointed with its team performance this year? I think uh, if I had to give one, and there's quite a few, mm -hmm. um, I would I would say the Cardinals. Um, I've kind of been on that train for a while now, just because of the consistency that they've had over the years. I mean, they haven't had a losing series since you were a, a kid, and that was a long time ago, Chris Rose. Ha-ha. So ha I, I think you too. Yeah. No, I, I just think that the expectations are – they're never, like, otherworldly for the Cardinals because uh, I think they focus on – you know, winning the division, you know, getting to the playoffs, like, but this year was just from, from the jump, just horrible. Um, and they have like, they had the lineup to do it. And they, they, I feel like they had everything to do it. I know you could say, yeah, their starting pitcher was never really there. Um, so they really never had a chance, but I don't know if I necessarily believe that. Um, but the way that things have gone for them, it's just been, it's been clubhouse drama. It's been underperformance on the field. Offensively, Chris, when we we picked them as a better lineup than the Braves, which is, you know, seems Lappable. silly. But they're fifth in OPS, mm. fourth in OBP. I mean, like, fifth in home runs. Like, this is not a bad offense. But they just didn't get the job done defensively and on the pitching side. And that's been their calling card for years. Uh -huh. So I think this team just looked 
like it was going to be another solid team and it just never got there. And again, to have that consistency with your organization and then to have a year like this, I think is really bad. Now you had the clubhouse riffs, you have a log jam of, of outfielders that you still haven't taken care of. So you better go do that in the off season. Then you have your GM saying, yeah, we need three starting pitchers this year in free agency. Or like, we need to go get three starting pitchers. Where are you going to do that? And guess what? You had a couple guys, Jordan Montgomery. Why didn't you try to extend him? Like you're going to have to go pay free agency for somebody else. You had a guy in house doing well for you, taking the ball every single fifth day over the last three years, putting up very solid numbers. You should have been proactive about it. You shouldn't have to go out and get three starters in the off season, be a trader free agency. You could have kept a couple guys in house. That's been your recipe for years. You keep guys around because it creates a good clubhouse culture. And now like some of those guys graduated, the clubhouse culture wasn't great. You have a chance to, you, you had a chance to lock this guy up and just didn't get it done. Now he's playing for somebody else. So I think for me, it's the Cardinals uh, and, 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 and there are other teams, but I just think that because of like the clubhouse drama, they take the cake to me. I hate to pile on, but to me, it, this was obvious. It is the Cardinals. Now, Yankee fans are sitting here screaming at the top of their lungs. Are you kidding me? Look what's happened the last few weeks. Well, two to three weeks ago, even though most Yankee fans will say, well, I knew for a while this team couldn't do it. They were still in this thing. The Mets until the trade deadline. And the Padres, I mean, I suppose they're still in it. But I'm going to go with the Cardinals. In part, listen to some of these numbers. They have been double digits back in the division every day since July 3rd. Since July 3rd, the closest they've been in the division was five and a half, and that was on June 2nd. Are you kidding me? Now, they're a mid-payroll team, right? We think of them as big spenders because of the guys on the corners in Arenado, who actually, remember, the Rockies are picking up part of that tab, and Paul Goldschmidt, whom you didn't pay premium price to get an MVP. They're kind of middle of the road, but the Brewers, Rays, Orioles, Mariners all have lower payrolls, all hold playoff spots right now. The Diamondbacks, Marlins, and Reds all have lower payrolls and are all still very much in contention. And to make matters worse, if you're a Cardinals fan, you do have to go off-season shopping. Why? Because according to the latest rankings on MLB Pipeline, you're only 22nd when it comes to a farm system. So you look at some of these other teams, that are in contention, are going to have a shot at the World Series, and are top five or top ten when it comes to farm systems, this is a very frustrated fan base that is looking for change. And it has been bad from the jump. You talked about the things going on in the clubhouse. Shocking. It's probably the most shocking story in baseball this year on a negative side. And, you know, I... I... The shift thing is weird to me. Like defensively, the numbers being as bad as they had been um, is strange to me. Like that's that's an organizational thing. They have to figure that out as well during the offseason. What do you mean the shift thing? What are you talking about? Well, like their numbers with shifts and like their defensive um, alignment has just been bad. Like they're not a good defensive team and they've been a good defensive team for years and they have good defensive players, but they're not putting them in the right spots. Okay. Well, all right. Shift. Um, Cause I think shift and I think banning the shift, but uh, you're talking about just strategically where you're putting your defenders. Got it. Talk about the story of Gunnar Henderson. He was a single shy of the cycle when he stepped up to the plate in the eighth inning as they're blowing out the Oakland A's on Sunday. Little single. He would have gotten into the history books. Instead, he rips one down the line. Easy two bagger. Henderson said, yeah, I thought about it. But it was there for the taking. Four extra base hits on the day. That ain't bad. Would you have understood had he pulled up at first? Uh, yeah, I don't I don't think anyone would have cared either way. It was 11 to one at that point. Um it wasn't something like crazy egregious. Like if he would have just like said, ah, my hammy, you know, like just kind of pulled up like that. No, um, well, no, no, no. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. That's the one thing he couldn't have done. <clears throat> no, but is this that... is. Yeah. No. 
Okay. I, I have no problem with it if he would have pulled up, but I'm glad he didn't. I, I, I just think that – I want to talk more about Gunnar Henderson and, and not necessarily this instance. Um, Please. You know, when you have a chance for a cycle and you end up taking the extra base hit, I think it's the right place statistically. You get that extra little slug percentage, which is what they pay you for. Uh, but this guy, you talk about a reason why Baltimore is where they're at, and he's a massive part of it. Uh, already with a 4-1 B-War, which is, you know, I think four is a really good, like, uh, talking point when you're talking about war. If you're, if you're over a four war, like, you, you've had a really good season, and you're making the league minimum, young dude. Uh, everything about this guy screams consistent, like, could be perennial all-star type play. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think that, you know, watching him do this and the fact that he – <clears throat> didn't even really he said he thought about it did he say that after the game he said he thought about it before the at bat but the minute he hit it down the line he was like come on it's go time it's a it's a double it's a you know, i, I think do you think the a's would have yelled at him if he had stopped at first or no uh, no maybe caught save might have took a glance out there and stared a little bit he's a little old school but i don't think any of the a's really cheated the game have enough dirt on this, their spikes to really be mad at about anything like that. So, yeah, I, I don't think it was would have been a big deal, but I'm kind of glad he didn't do it. I'm glad he didn't do it because I think it just would have been controversy galore. Like, I don't need that on a Monday morning. Just would have been cool if he had just gotten solid single to left, gone the other way, nailed one. Congratulations, you're the first visiting player to ever hit for the cycle in Oakland Coliseum. That's what it would have been. Okay. But, I mean... By the way, they had a great road trip. They had a really, really good road trip. Good for them, man. They just continue to mash and play good baseball and have fun. God almighty. They're really interesting. They you know, really... Uh, I'm looking up something real quick. What's that? Do you know an American League, like ERA, title contender on their team? Someone tweeted this at me. I didn't know. Yes. Uh, Bradish, Kyle Bradish, three hundred three. Yeah. Get yeah, down on the twos, big fella. I know he's been really good for them. I, I I remember when I did some research for the show and I wanted to talk about how they just didn't have enough guys. Now, it, they could have made a bigger move, I suppose. Yes. But in the off season, I don't think of the trade deadline. They weren't going to get Verlander. They weren't going to get Scherzer. So they got the next best type of guy and that's Jack Flaherty and maybe that'll help him come playoff time we'll see I we'll I see. said this on I just finished talking baseball I said this they have no money on the books like none no money on the books why can't why can't they go offer Shohei 70 75 million a year for three years because their ownership what sucks because their ownership sucks I just answered it for you yeah but you I don't care like you, I'm gonna that's tell you a something. smart business move for them listen Listen to me for just a second. They are going to have a hard time keeping these guys that are all coming up right now. It's not going to, this won't rear its ugly Why? head for several years. Why? Because their ownership is clueless. You think the guys care about the ownership? They don't care about the ownership. If they no, offer you them the right amount of money. I know, but that's the point is that they, they're not going to offer it. I, I don't, I wouldn't have faith. In, they better start doing that right now. Bra- I'm like, with you. Look at the Braves. They lock these dudes up and then go after sh- offer Shohei 80 million for three years a year. See well, what happens. Get it. That won't Why? Get it done. I know it probably won't get it done, but think about that, dude. They could, and they probably still have a bottom level payroll. Yeah, I think they're 29th or something in payroll. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I don't have enough faith in ownership that they're going to do the right thing for these kids and this fan base. I hope they do. I think it's cool. I love the extra base hit spraying everybody. It's rejuvenated this franchise. They've got a serious shot at making the World Series. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Thank you. Um, We know that technology has changed the world. Changed it. Like when I was driving around in L.A. visiting my brother in the mid-90s, I used to have to use a Thomas guide which was a map. You'd have to flip love, the pages. I love Thomas Guides. Yes. So I'd put it love on my them. lap, and I'd drive from freeway to freeway as I was trying to figure out my way. I don't have to do that anymore, right? 
I've got GPS all over the place, in my car, on my phone. It talks to me, all sorts of stuff. So if you're looking for a way to jumpstart your physical activity, FitBod can help. It is a personalized workout plan designed for your fitness level and your goals. Because FitBod app, it creates customized workouts based on your goals, your fitness level, your available equipment around the house. I know that that's a big deal. Workouts that improve as you do as well, right? As you get stronger, as you get more sound with your body, it will change with you, okay? So your strength training on day one is not going to be your strength training three weeks in. It studies your past workouts. It adapts to your available gym equipment. It keeps your gym sessions fresh and fun by mixing up the workouts. And it keeps track of your achievement and personal best with FitBod's progress tracking charts. I know when I'm doing well in my health lifestyle, it's when, you know, FitBod's yelling at me like, good job, Chris, you reached your goals. And all of a sudden I sit there, I'm like, ding, I did it. So try FitBod today. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app free at FitBod.me slash today. That is F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash today. Yeah, you'll be feeling great. I always feel great this time of year because I got the Little League World Series on. I love seeing kids from all around the globe competing, and I love, I love the Little League Classic that they play. Yesterday, the Phillies showed up early to check out the team from Pennsylvania. You look in the stands, there's Harper, there's Schwarber, there's Trey Turner, Reese Hoskins was out there. Could you imagine being a 12-year-old kid? You look in the stands, and there's your favorite baseball players seeing you. How awesome that would be. It, it, it's wild. You know, I think I have a little bit of uh, contention with the Little League World Series because I never had the opportunity to play. I was played pony ball when I was 11 and 12, so I didn't really have this chance. Oh. Uh, I think I'm just like a little jealous of all these kids. And then you add on to the fact that, yeah, they're getting to meet some of these dudes i mean that's a, that's a really big deal for kids uh something they'll remember for the rest of their lives just looking up in the stands and yeah there's bryce freaking harper dude the guy that's gonna be in cooperstown uh and he was rooting me on or you know it's 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 a very special i mean obviously a very special week for these kids um but that just adds on to it there's nothing better it is the best game of the year the best regular season game of the year i don't care who's playing in it I love everything about it. I love that the players ride with the kids on the buses. That And here's two things I would do, I think, to change it. I would give the teams a day off afterward because I think it's a long day. Either before or after, I would have to confer with you because it is a long day. They get there. They're, u- they're used to resting at 10 a.m. on when they're going to be playing at 7 o'clock. Right. So you still want to treat the game with respect. It does matter in the standings. Um, So I just want to make sure that part's taken care of. But the rest of it is awesome. I mean, to hear Bryce Harper when he went up with with the ESPN broadcast crew while the game was going on and he's tearing up talking about his kids. Did you hear this, Mm -hmm. by the way? Yeah. Yeah. Let's play it for people that didn't hear. People don't understand, you know, you, you get you get taken away from them a lot um, as they grow up, as you guys know in the media and um, know in professional sports, you, you're always on the road, you're always traveling, and, you know, you miss their first steps or you miss, you know, the way they talk. And, um, you know, I'm missing them right now. They're, uh, I'm getting emotional. I just I love my kids so much. What a great opportunity to peek into the world of Bryce Harper and what he's about. He keeps doing everything the right way. Dang you, Bryce. Yeah. Making people fall in love with you, dude. Jesus. Enough, dude. Holy smokes. We so, get by it. the way, why did we lose the Field of Dreams game? We did we? I don't think it's going on. Isn't it this time of year? We missed it. We didn't have there... it. Oh yeah, I don't know. It wasn't it supposed to be Cubs and Reds? They did that last year, I think. That was last year's game? Wait, They what? did cancel was... it for some reason. Construction at the Field of Dreams site. Good job, Robbie Scirocco. Wait, Cubs-Reds was last year? I thought Yankees-White Sox was last year. Uh, I thought that was two years ago. That was two years ago already? I think so. I think so. Yeah, okay. So there you go. I love the special games. I love the Little League World Series. I love seeing the players do their thing. I just think it's amazing on all fronts. Really cool. 
You know what else is really cool? Latest episode of the Chris Rose Rotation. Andres Munoz, the co-closer of the hard-charging Seattle Mariners. Kid grew up in Mexico and tells some unbelievable stories about what it took to get to the big leagues. I, I, I was in awe of him. We talked about everything. Uh, how important it was for him to learn English. Why he wanted to. You forget, he's been around the big league landscape for a while. He's still only 24. Um, the sacrifices his family had to make. And the choice he had to make as a kid. His life could go one direction or another direction. I I loved him. I loved everything about him. So that's uh, out on the latest episode of the Rose Rotation. Uh, I love that you did that because I think anybody that watches Major League Baseball needs to kind of think more about the – I mean, I mean, this is not Latin America, but you know, he's from Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy's coming from the DR in Venezuela. Like, it's such a, it's just different, man. Having to leave your country, go to somewhere where you don't necessarily speak the language, but you got to learn it. Um, it's you'll hear some stories that'll make you say, "Dang, I'm I feel very fortunate to grow up where I grew up." We we heard him. I, I could have talked to him forever. He had to go catch a bus, but he was great. So I really enjoyed that conversation, and I appreciate the Mariners for setting that up. We are back at it again on Tuesday, most likely 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific, if you're joining us live on AMP, which we certainly hope you do. For our amazing producer, good to see Robbie Scirocco, the uber-talented Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose. We will see you Tuesday on Baseball Today.